today, best-selling author Jim Rickards, you know him from Currency Wars, Sold Out, and his latest, Money, GPT. Jim, always good to be with you. Welcome back. Thank you, Danielle. It's great to be with you. Yeah, I'm happy I caught you before we're both packing our bags, right. heading to Rick Rule's show next week in Boca. Yeah, that's Can't one of the great, uh, great conferences every year. Yep, absolutely. Yep. But uh, look, no shortage of news. What do you think I'm going to start with, Jim? Well, obviously, we're going to talk about uh, the flop of, of that debate. But I want to bring up uh, billionaire investor Ray Dalio, founder of hedge uh, fund firm Bridgewater's uh, warning post-debate, Jim. He says, if Biden drops out of the presidential race after last week's debate performance, a clash between extremists on the right and left may be in store in America. He laid out the clash in what he acknowledged were stark terms, saying, quote, while it is now clear that the red team Republican side will consist of players from the hard right, we will soon find out if the blue team, the Democrats, but will be from the soft left or the hard left. Your take on uh, on Dalio's comments here before we get your your perception of the debate. Yeah, um, there is a uh, a big split, even, uh, you know, something you might describe as at least a political uh, version of a civil war inside the Democratic Party. We see it almost every day. And I think Ray correctly described yeah, there's no center of the Democratic Party. That's long gone. Uh, those people I know, I know some very moderate uh, loyal Democrats, people like Doug Sosnick, Doug Schoen and others. They're they're just very reasonable, smart people, but they've been, you know, they've been run out of the party or working around the edges, uh, even though they're both extremely uh, smart and talented. And it's pretty much the, the, the far left, um, the, you know, the AOCs, the progressives, Hakeem Jeffries and others, and that's called the, the everyday left who are uh, still pretty radical, but maybe, maybe slightly more practical. So, so he's right about that. Um, but it's, it's getting worse than that. And um, just, uh, you know, the French Revolution is always a, a classic example. So the revolutionaries uh, overthrew the, you know, King, King Louis the Sixteenth and uh, Marie Antoinette got rid of them, et cetera. But then they, once they set up the guillotine and started chopping people's heads off, they started chopping each other's heads off. In other words, the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the Jacobins were more radical than the original revolutionaries and Robespierre, you know, killed thousands of people in the guillotine and then they chopped his head off and those they just keep going until something intervenes and in that case it was napoleon um but uh i thought it was interesting the other day just a couple of days ago it was uh what they call pride month or whatever um and they had a they had a pride parade in new york city uh last sunday and uh so that's pretty radical, pretty left wing, um, not everybody, I'm not painting with a broad brush, but it's just the case. But the, the parade was attacked and disrupted by the Hamas right. supporters, the, by the terrorist supporters. So here you had like, who's, who's more extreme left, the, the, the pride brigade uh, at their extreme versus the Hamas terrorist supporters. But none of them were, were on the right, let's put it that way. They were attacking each other. That is the history of a lot of revolutionary movements. I mean, it happened with the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks and, uh, you know, in, during the Russian Revolution. So, uh, but I guess where I would disagree with right, that that's happening anyway. But the, to suggest that, you know, gee, you need Biden to hold it all together. Uh, and if you get rid of Biden, you're going to open the door to this conflict. I would say the conflict is already there. Mm. Biden's not holding anything together. Biden can't hold himself together. So to anchor anything on Biden, I mean, I would say the 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 biggest um, uh, surprise to me post debate. So the debate was a week ago, Thursday, um, uh, and uh, you know Biden, you know, failed miserably. Uh, and of course, ever since then, we've been reading all this commentary. Oh, you know, Biden was not coherent. He couldn't, he couldn't, he lost his train of thought. He was babbling. He was saying things that made no sense. And, you know, the Democrats were shocked. We can't believe it. How did this happen? I'm like, are you kidding me? This has been obvious for four years. Um, and I, I said years ago that uh, dementia, I'm not a doctor, just to be clear, but, you know, it doesn't mean we can't uh, know a little bit about it. Uh, and some of us have firsthand experiences, by the way. Dementia is a progressive disease. It only gets worse. It doesn't get better and there is no cure. So if you have it at all over the course of time, 
it will get worse. You'll, you know, it doesn't have to be full blown Alzheimer's where you don't even know, like recognize your family members, but the idea that you uh, are not rooted in reality, you make up stories, um, you know, et cetera, your logic isn't really there. That's what happens. And that was apparent four years ago. It was clear in the 2020 basement strategy. Why do you think they kept Joe Biden in the basement? So to, to get to today, to 2024, and say, gee, I'm shocked the guy's so far gone. Like, where have you been for the last four years? Having said that, the Democrats fell victim to their own, uh, well, when you lie and produce propaganda. So this whole Biden thing's been a big cover-up. He's, he's been going for a while, the whole Scranton Joe, six-pack Joe, Amtrak Joe. It was always a facade. I mean, he's kind of a mean-spirited, nasty, uh, not very bright, you know, kind of uh, white, white, collar, white collar criminal or worse from Delaware. I mean, that's who he is. Um, but he's been losing, but he's been losing his mind. Uh, but the, but the Democrats bought their own propaganda. They were putting out so much propaganda through mainstream media, MSNBC, CNN, you know, other channels, squashing the internet, using Facebook as a form of censorship, Twitter before Elon Musk bought it, et cetera. They actually drank their own Kool-Aid and sort of convinced themselves that Biden was okay when he's never been okay. I mean, if you if you want to read the most revealing comments, get some of these off the record comments from foreign leaders, foreign heads of state at the G7 summit, uh, which was in uh, mid-June at the Normandy, um, the D-Day commemoration, yes. which was in early June. Uh, they're shocked, shocked and appalled at what they say. So it's been there all along, but all of a sudden the Democrats got a wake up call. Oh, gee, the guy's really not all there. So, the, my, but the point of that is the idea that he's the center of anything, the idea that he's holding it together is nonsense. It's a facade. It's already fallen apart. One, one last thing, Danielle, um, I use a lot of different, in, I use a lot of different indicators and sources in my own analysis, uh, in my own models. And one of the most reliable ones I use is that Hedge fund mavens are the worst political analysts you can find. Whatever, find out what they're doing. I'm serious. Find out what they're doing and do the opposite. So, you know, and Ray Dal I've met Ray Dalio in, in Greenwich. You know, nice guy. Does a lot of good uh, charitable work. Uh, but you know, Ray Dalio, Paul Singer, uh, Bill Ackman. Um, you know, I could, you know the list. Take any one of them. Find out what they're supporting, and that's pretty much a loser. And then, you know, go, so as a contrary indicator, it's great. You know, act, these guys were all in on uh, Nikki Haley. I mean, they, uh, you know, and, and many, many other examples. But their hedge fund mavens are one of the best contrary indicators. Oh, uh, Ken Griffin, I forgot to mention him. Hedge fund mavens are one of the best contrary indicators of what's actually going on that you well, can find. 